It is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. Producer Dan is along for the ride as well. Unfortunately, I was not along for the ride as you went to Dodger Stadium to say hello to a bunch of Giants and Dodgers. And I saw you and Blake Snell with a cute little... So- look at that. Look at that adorable picture. By the way, is he that much taller than you? Yeah, he is. I think he's like 6'4". I'm only 6'1", C. Rosie. Thanks for bringing that up early in the morning. I did have a great time. Uh, Blake and I had an excellent conversation. I, I caught up with Matt Chapman. I caught up with Max Muncy. Um, I, I talked to Gavin Stone, uh, mm. famously Colin Stone's brother. Uh, it was great. I, had a, I saw Susan Slusser, who I know you and I both uh, know and love. And uh, yeah, a lot of people missed you. Where's Chris at? It's like, we're packaged. I'm like, hey, guys. Screw Chris. It's about me today. Well, no, that's not fair. I was traveling back and, uh, okay. you know, yeah, I had some stuff. I love getting to, out to the stadiums, whether it's Dodger Stadium, Angel Stadium, or wherever we tour around the country. Always love getting out there and we'll do so soon. So, you know what it is, Chris? What's that, bud? I think it's important for us to get down there because we sit and we talk about what? baseball all the time. It's so nice to see the guys put in work. I was watching Miggy Rowe, who I also talked to. Him and Mookie were out there taking ground balls together. You know, Mookie's, uh, you know, still new to shortstop uh, in, in a way, and, and Miggy's not. And they, they're just going back and forth, rapping. And it's all the pregame work you like to see. And so often we just see the games are just highlights, but it's like, what about behind the scenes and, like, how much work these guys actually do put in? I, I just love being around that and, and seeing that. So um, it is nice for us to go down, show our face, and we need to do that more often. Come on, man. And by the way, if you're going to host shows and sometimes be critical of people, it's important to be able to get out there and talk to some dudes face to face, get the real stories about what's going on. And that's what we'll continue to do here on Baseball Today. A uh, quick tip of the cap to two teams. Uh, the New York Yankees are 5-0 and for the first time since 1992 and just the fourth time in their history, which is kind of crazy. By the way, Yankee fans, I hate to bring this up, but it's just a fact. Don't yell at me. Don't call me Yankee hater. The previous three times, they did not make the playoffs. (laughs) For Pirates, 5-0 for the first time since 1983. Um, So we talked about both those teams yesterday. I just wanted to give a tip of the cap. We will not be discussing them in depth today. That's because we want to talk about the Houston Astros, who not only got their first win of the season, who not only got the first win of the Joe Espada era, congratulations on his managerial first win as well. Oh, yeah, Renel Blanco, Blanco the Jays in major historic fashion. Ground ball, Dubon throws to first. No hitter, Renel Blanco in his eighth career start. The 30-year-old. Mates magic on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Eight career start. I think the guy had less than like 30 major league appearances. This is the sort of stuff I live for. And it's the beauty of baseball. Guys come out of nowhere, etch their names in a history book, and they will have that forever. Well, he's, I mean, the story behind him is really, really incredible. I mean, I, I knew who he was. I've seen him pitch before. I didn't really ever do any background uh, checking on him. But this guy was signed at 22 years old, Chris, in 2016 for $5,000. When you're talking about guys, scouts going down to the DR and to you know, the Latin countries, they're looking for 16-year-olds mm-hmm. and putting them in academies. Uh, Blanco was working out with Julio Rodriguez. That's how he got seen, uh, got sent to the Astros uh, facility. And then here he is now. Uh, like you said, he's been a reliever primarily in his career. James Click decided he's seen enough and wanted to put him in the uh, – or have him be a starter, stretch him out. And, you know, if it wasn't some, to some injuries to some of the guys in the starting rotation, he wouldn't even have got this chance. And now we're looking at a guy who just threw a no-hitter on 105 pitches. It could have been even less than that if he didn't walk George Springer at the end of the game. Uh, totally incredible. And, you know, he's – you heard uh, – you heard on the broadcast, or I don't know if they said it on the clip we just showed, but they were calling him Cambio Blanco because he started using this changeup so much more. Last night, 34% changeups, thir- uh, uh, 32% slider, 30% fastball. Do you know how hard that is as a hitter when a guy throws three pitches about the same amount of times and it can control them all? Like, you're this is what happens, Chris. You get no hit. Like, it's it, that's the most difficult thing about hitting is when you really have no idea what's coming. Like a lot of times you can get into a groove. You understand what the guy is going to throw in certain counts or he's got a pitch that he throws more often than not. 
But when a guy can do that, what he just did last night, I mean, the Blue Jays are a good offensive team. Mm-hmm. And he just went out there and did it. Put the team on his back after starting 0 4. So what a what a story. And you know, Jose Abreu doing his like the diving play. Like there was it was awesome. Yeah, a little bit more about his story. The dude was working on a car wash and yeah. uh before getting signed for a whopping five thousand dollars. And I think the Astros are as good as any team, right? It dates back to Altuve, who got what 15 grand. Framber got maybe 10 grand or something like that. Whoever's doing that in terms of the discovery for the Houston Astros, you get an A++ on your report card. Um, not only because of the injuries to Verlander and Urquidy, would he not have been in the starting rotation, he probably wouldn't have broken camp with the team. And he didn't do it until like the day before where he solidified his spot. And so these are the amazing stories where it all ties together. Um, they just had the birth of their second child, a, a little baby girl. So it's all seemingly coming together for a guy who has to, has re- had to really piece it together. And that's, that's the thing I love about it. As for the game, uh, Chandler Roma, the athletic did a really good job breaking it down. He threw, um, Blanco threw 19 pitches in the first. He didn't throw any more than 15 in any other inning, or we would have had another one of those Astros combined no hitters, which they are famous for only three balls found the outfield. None of them traveled a greater distance than 192 feet. So there wasn't one blast to the alley where a guy Mm -hmm. just missed it by a fraction. We're talking about a dude who was in complete control. And I don't know if this is anything that can change his career from here on out for a 30-year-old, but I'm just happy that he had that night, if nothing else, Blue. 100%. I'm looking right now. He threw 105 pitches, 73 of them for strikes. So, I mean... An incredible, incredible outing. And I'll tell you what, Chris, it does change the trajectory of his career because he's going to get more opportunities now, whether it's with the Astros to start, you know, whether he goes back into the bullpen, kind of a long guy, we'll see what they end up doing with him. Um, Like he's going to get more opportunities because of this. So congratulations, man. That's freaking awesome. Uh, Last thing, Yiner Diaz, what a day. First player in major league history to be behind the plate for a no hitter while having a multi homer game. A little That's what we're looking for. Like we we said that was going to happen this year for them at the catching position. That a boy Yiner. Yeah, maybe not catching no hitters, but the homers, baby. Yeah, well he can swing it. There's no question. All right, uh, let's move on to South Florida, and it kind of figures against the Marlins that Trout would come up as the big fish oh in this God. one. Ploof has been, you know, you're welcome, everybody. I'll be performing at the Ha Ha Hole coming was. up on Thursday night. Don't forget to try the prime rib and tip your waitresses. Uh, Ploof was all over this before the season where he said that Mike Trout was going to return to MVP form and win the MVP. Now, I'm not, I don't know if I'll go that far, but certainly the guy was swinging it not once, but twice last night. And there's oh. another rocket. Mike oh. Trout has tied it up with an absolute bomb to the top of the facade in left center field. Talk about Stanton territory. Trout hammers it. And it's 4-4, 473 feet. Okay, I always love the numbers that they get on home run distance. When did they stop counting on this one? Because that one looked like it went 500 feet. I'll never understand home run distances. I, I just, I won't. I don't, yeah. I'm with you on that one, C. Rosie. Right? I imagine that you probably, there were probably a few that you thought, oh my God, I crushed that one. It was like listed at 398. You're like, that's bullshit. Sorry. Oh yeah, all the, t- all the time hitters come back. So there's no way. I hit that way further. I will say this about that homer though. 113 off the bat, 26 degree launching. It's about as good as you can do. 27 degrees is like the sweet spot for homers. If you hit the ball like, you know, 98 and above and you hit it at a 27 degree launch angle, it's a homer. I mean, that thing was pure. pure. That was like watching Tiger Woods hit like a like a three mm-hmm. three iron. You know what? It, re- it reminded me of the um, the social clip of Trout at Top Golf a few years yes. ago. Yes. Yes. That, that's exactly what I thought it was, except the Dude. baseball version. And, and there's something about clicking an off-speed pitch that's better than clicking a heater. Mm. Uh, I don't know why, like that spin, whatever. Something happens when you click a, a, a slider or even like a changeup. It's just it goes farther. It just feels better off the bat. So I Trout said like that was nice to be able to just kind of watch one and not have to start running around the bases like he knew he got it. Which I mean, 
I don't even know what he means by that because he always hits bombs. But, uh, dude, what a freaking swing. All right, but let's let's get to the bigger topic, which is, is it enough for you as a baseball fan to see Trout return to his peak form, which we don't know it'll happen. We certainly hope it does. Or do you have to see him in the playoffs in order for you to kind of fill your Mike Trout appetite? I think it's watching him perform on a nightly basis is enough for me. There's nothing else that he can do, Chris, to like, you know, carry his team. Like this guy has one dotted it throughout his career. Like what else can this guy do now in saying that? Would I like to see him in the playoffs? Absolutely. I don't know how that's going to happen. If that's going to happen with the Angels, like, are they going to ever entertain a trade for him? Like, I think a lot of people around baseball fans that aren't in Anaheim or Angels fans would, like, obviously welcome that. Uh, We want to see Trout like he was in the WBC. Like, watching him in, like, those moments, it's special to see the best athletes perform at the highest level in the highest intensity game. So obviously I want to see him do that. I want to see him. This is like being real. Like I'm not like just appeasing to angels fans. I want to see him do it with the angels. Like I want to see him go to the world series with the angels. I think that would be incredible for him. uh, Incredible for that fan base who is, you know, weather in the storm, baby. So I'd like to see him do it there. But if you're asking me like, is it enough just to see Mike Trout perform? It is like watching that guy play is enough for me. Um, if I'm getting greedy, sure. I'd like to see him in the playoffs and whether that's with the angels or not, I don't know. So I've been really guilty of this over the years about, um, my frustration of Mike Trout, the best player that we've had in the game over the last dozen years, not being available in the most important time that we've got because his team just hasn't been good enough. And I do sit here and wonder how much frustration bubbles inside of him, right? I mean, sure, you can have a 400 plus million dollar contract and be well on your way to Cooperstown, but the guy wants to win. Now he's not the, he is not, he's the same dude every day. And I think that's probably part of what has made Mike Trout as great as he is, is that in the ultimate failure sport, your consistency every day, he doesn't allow himself to get down to the depth that some players have, but man, it, Don't you think there's days he wakes up and goes, this sucks. I am an amazing baseball player, and I have 13 playoff at-bats. That's got to chap him a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, I'm nowhere near my trout in anything, uh, uh, money-wise, ability-wise. But I did play on bad teams, Chris. And, yeah, it's so frustrating. It's frustrating knowing that essentially all you're doing is playing for your statistics. It sucks. Like, it I would I would trade everything to go back. I, I, if I mean I didn't have great statistics anyway, but I would go even lower on my statistics if I could get into the playoffs and play in those games. Like it's I would give up a lot to do that. So yeah, it definitely wears on him. Like it's it's actually incredible that he's been able to be as consistent as he has. And and a lot of the times in August and September, you're playing two full months with nothing to play for. No motivation whatsoever. This guy's already got the bag. Like the only thing he's doing is playing for statistics. And I don't even know if he really cares about that, but like, that's it. What a bummer. Do you think there will ever be a time where he goes in and asks for trade? Cause it, it would have to come from him. Knowing him and his attitude. I, I don't, it was something would have to happen something something major would have to happen within the organization which like i mean shoot like it kind of has many times like in his tenure there so i i would say no but if you're if you're the angels for an office like and if you're ever going to trade him like now is the time this is it i mean you're you're running out peak time where where people would be willing to pick up that contract right he's in his early 30s now he, he's not like 28-year-old Mike Trout. I, he's had some freaky injuries at times. So let's go. Chris, yeah. 412 OBP, 583 slug, 994 OPS, 174 OPS plus. If you do that one year in your career, you're a freaking god. I know, dude. He's done that over 5,400 at-bats. Uh, he's got four hits this year. Three have gone over the wall. 
and he's driven in himself, and that's it. No way. All solos? Yeah. Go, yeah, go, come on. Does that surprise you? Like a little bit, yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish it was different. I really do. I know people are like, why are you ripping on the game? Dude, we just want to see what's best for the best player that we've seen in the last couple of decades, arguably. Mookie, I think Mookie's the same, though. I think he has three homers all solo, so before Angels fans jump down my throat. but gosh. He might have – does he have four homers? I don't know. Okay. God, he's a stud, too. Um, baseball Today, brought to you by our friends over Fubo. The show is called Baseball Today, which means we are working Monday through Friday, which means we love having you, whether you're in the live chat or you watch us later in the day on our YouTube channel or you take us in via your fi- favorite podcast form. The point is, is you want to stay informed about what we are talking about. And so if you plan on following us all season long, you're going to absolutely need to watch as many baseball games as you can. And the best way to do it is with Fubo. Fubo is a live TV streaming service with most MLB games that you can get without cable TV. So with Fubo, you can get up to 350 live channels. That includes must-haves for the baseball season. Stops like ESPN, Fox, MLB Network, MLB.tv, and much, much more. To learn more about Fubo's channel lineup and to secure your exclusive 14-day free trial, visit FuboTV.com slash John Boy. Once again, visit FuboTV.com slash John Boy. If you're anything like me, you are just watching and watching and enjoying season because that's what it's all about. Although I will be the first to admit that I did not know that Blanco had a no-hitter going until I was shifting through uh, social media and I heard, Abreu makes a great play to keep it alive. I was I, I don't know. I didn't get an alert on my phone or anything. Could have gotten a little help. Well, you were you alerted me as well. I was at the Dodger game doing my whole thing. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, you were rubbing elbows with the uh, high and mighty. You got to do it. I hear you. I hear you. Shoto Imanaga, sparkling Major League Baseball debut for the Chicago Cubs on a chilly day in the Windy City. No hit ball into the sixth. Nine Ks with all sorts of smiles and excitement and a fist pump. Is it possible, Plouffe? that Imanaga will steal the rookie spotlight from his fellow countryman, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. I mean, not only is it possible, I mean, I picked it to happen, C. Rosie. And I think for a couple... You did too? Oh, yeah, we did. Nice. I think for a couple different reasons. I think that uh, there's a bigger shadow out there in Los Angeles. Uh, First of all, I didn't even talk about Bobby Miller, who I didn't didn't go up and talk to him. I, I was too intimidated to. I wanted to. This guy's like actually a good looking dude. He's like svelte, looks really good. But like there's a shadow out there. There's a lot of really, really good players and a lot of really good pitchers. I mean, Walker Buehler's coming back. Bobby Miller's a stud. Like Glasnow's doing his thing. Like, so if the Dodgers have success, which they're going to have success, like it's not just going to be because of Yamamoto or he's not going to be maybe like the main, main reason. I think that uh, Shota could be the main reason that the Cubs have success this year. I think definitely one of the top reasons. So I think that's going to play into to voters' minds. I mean, I know Justin Steele is there. He's a dog. There's no doubt about it. Um, but Shota doing what he did last night, uh, I, I think there's a chance that he shines a little bit brighter. Um, he's going to have a little bit more of that spotlight on him for his team. Uh, w- the way he pitched last night was kind of what we heard uh, guys talking about in spring training. He didn't have like great spring training numbers, but nobody really cares about that. Uh, you listen to guys talk, like it's funky. It's weird. It's different. Like it takes a little bit to get used to. And you saw that last night. He was pitching inside to righties. Uh, I think he had like five uh, strikeouts looking, which is, you know, that's to me, when you get guys looking quite often, it means you're locating well. And it also means you're a little funky and guys aren't, are guessing up there. Uh, a lot of off balance swings. And, and I think, I think that's the thing that really stood out to me is he's got stuff. Like he he can run the fastball up. The lefty throwing like 94, 95, like that's that's plus stuff. But he's also a pitcher, C Rose. And like when I see guys doing that, setting hitters up, living on the peripherals of the strike zone, um, like I said, pitching inside to righties as a lefty, I, I fall in love. So yeah, not only do I think it can happen, I think it's going to happen, C Rose. Now, I suppose the bigger question is, do we think long term who ends up having the bigger impact in the states? That's I think that's a little tougher question. But here's part of the reason I went with 
Shota as the National League Rookie of the Year, just like you did. He's 30 years old. He is truly seasoned. Now, Yamamoto, I think, is 26 and had really almost unprecedented success in terms of winning awards over in Japan. But Shota, it, everything I have read about him throughout the spring, where actually he did have good strikeout numbers, by the way, um, in terms of innings pitched, he just feels really comfortable, I think, in his own skin. Like, we've talked about this for years and years, how challenging it can be for people that come over and have to adapt to a brand new culture. Not only does it feel like he's curious about it, I think he loves it. Everything you read about him, right? He came out to his warm-up song yesterday was the Blackhawks goal-scoring song, Chelsea Dagger. <laughs> Like he, you don't think he, he said, I went to a Blackhawks game. It really kind of vibed with who I am. You don't think the Cubs fans heard that? We're like, love that. Shit, he gets us like, this is it. You, you listen to the players behind the scenes, Jan Gomes, who caught him said, you know what he's a lot, what he's done is he's opened himself up to be able to listen to us. He, he wants to be well-informed. He wants to learn, even though he's 30 years old and probably could have walked in here and said, Hey, here's my routine. Here's what I'm doing. You adjust to me. He says, what's going to make me better at this level? He also seems like a real playful guy who's got a great exuberant personality. Like all of this comes into being a major league baseball player. It's not just going to work and throwing six innings every five days, like immersing himself in this culture, enjoying it and grabbing it for what it's all about. I think that's going to help him immensely. Especially in that culture, Ciro's, um, and I think that does make it a little bit easier. Like the fact that the Cubs do have such a rich culture and Chicago as a sports town has such a rich culture. It's, it's easier to dive into that rather than, I don't know, what's another city that doesn't have as rich culture as that. You, you don't have to call anything out. Cause you're going to, you know what I'm talking about. I don't, yeah, you're, you're right. I don't want to call any cities out, but I, I think definitely, you definitely have to give credit to him for uh, being willing to do that. Cause you mentioned he's 30 years old. He's had success. He's coming over. Uh, but I think you have to give credit to the city of Chicago and Cubs fans. He mentioned that, you know, as he came out to warm up for his start, like Cubs fans gave him a big ovation. He goes, man, like I just wanted to pitch well for the, mm -hmm. the crowd. So kudos to Chicago for making this guy feel welcome and having that rich sports history. But I think you're right. Like a, a guy that's willing to come over here, and immerse himself in the culture and still want to learn and get better. That's not even, you know, guys coming over from Japan or the KBO or guys coming from Latin America. It's like the guys that know that you have to continue to work and get better and, and try to improve yourself every year in the big leagues. Those are the guys that stick around. So it's a good trait to have. Uh, by the way, he became just the second pitcher since at least 1901 to throw six innings, six shutout innings have at least nine Ks and no walks in his major league debut. Wow. Pretty good. No Not hitter through the fifth, right? Uh, Yeah, into the sixth. Into Charlie. The sixth. Our guy Charlie got He said, you know what? Let me show you how to do it. Two quick things about uh, Los Angeles. Once again, a week from Friday, we're having our first ever live edition of this show. So if you're out west or driving through or live out here within an hour of Boomtown Brewery in downtown Los Angeles, come join us. Uh, the VIP tickets are sold out. General admission still available that means you get to hang out near trevor plouffe maybe take a picture with him this is all unfolding before the dodgers play host to the padres there's actually a shuttle to the stadium that's within walking distance of boomtown brewery so we'll get you up there in plenty of time before first pitch so come out and join us it's our first ever live edition of the show if it's successful and you're going to help make it successful we will take it around the country we do promise yes trevor is michelle coming she will not be here okay yeah, I, I would love to have her join us, believe me. And if that could get more people to show up, we would do it. She's going somewhere else with our youngest son that week. I love that. I'm not sure if Olivia's coming or not. Yeah. Let's well, see. there's I a mean, possibility, people. Possi All right. Which people, definitely will go. sell more tickets. And one other thing, by the way, there's a rumor that two of my co-hosts are opposing each other at Dodger Stadium tonight. I know Logan Webb is going, but I checked the probables for the Dodgers and it said glass now was going Wednesday but then we put out today um from I think our talking baseball site that glass now is going against Logan Webb and if that's the case what the hell Yikes. do I do root for two no hitters 
you got to go to the stadium, wear the jersey like Jake did yesterday with the Snakes Yankees and like Mama Kelsey did. Yeah, well, you would get you would get booed out of the stadium if you did a Giants Dodgers jersey yeah. together. Oh my, that's like doing a Yankees Mets or Yankees Red Sox. Ugh. So what would it say? It would say Glassweb, 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 or where, where now? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm having trouble with that. We now, okay. Like uh, let me know what we do in the chat, how I have my rooting interest in this one. This is this one could be a real challenge. Um, not much rooting going on at City Field these days. Mets fall to 0-4 for the first time since 2005. But let's focus on the good side of last night's game. That's the Detroit Tigers who are 4-0 for the first time in nearly a decade. How long do you have to see in order to believe with the kiddies from Motown? I mean, I think I already believe, Chris. Um you know, as a, and as a twins guy who like wants the twins to win the division and do well, uh, they're scaring me. There's no doubt about it because they've kind of, they've won games in a bunch of different ways. They've had great starts by Scooble and, and, and my boy, Jack Flaherty. Um, and then they've had a comeback against the white Sox, and then the stalemate against the Mets where they opened it up in the 10th inning. So they're, they're playing good fundamental baseball. I think the offense is still a work in progress for them, but the relievers have been great. I think uh, one run in 17 innings this season has the uh, the relievers have given up, so that's the sign of a good team. They can kind of do – they're a well-constructed roster that can win the game in a lot of different ways, similar to, I think, kind of the Diamondbacks, how they're able to do that as well. So – they're already showing me that they're going to 100% be in the race. They're scaring me like they're definitely going to give uh, the Twins a run for their money. So I, I don't think – I mean, I want to see it more. I want to see it into June and all of those things. But they are on paper good and already starting the season off hot, and they've shown they've been able to win in different ways. So, yeah, they're they're freaking me out a little bit, Chris. Well, I'm not judging it on a four-game – you know, season opening run, I did I did pick them to win the division, uh, in part because I thought Tariq Skubal was going to win the Cy Young Award. Um, it's the rest of that rotation. What can Kenta Maeda give them? What can your boy Jack Flaherty do? Because a few years ago, we thought he was going to be a consistent dude near the top of the NL Cy Young voting every year. And unfortunately, injuries have kind of derailed that. And now he's here on a one-year deal, I believe. And trying to rediscover who he is at the major league level. So that's going to be a big part of this. Uh, they've only scored 16 runs in four games, but they have three one-run wins. Now, that's tough That's tough sledding. It's I don't uh, encourage trying to win every game by one run. Um, makes for a lot of nail-biting, and at some point your bullpen is going to give in. It just happens throughout 162 games. But I do believe in this team. I, I just... I think they've had some really good drafts. I think that Torkelson can take that second half from last year and propel that. I think Riley Green, as long as he's on the field, is going to become a top 10 player in the American League. So, yeah, I think so. Whoa. I think so. I think he's got a top 10 player. I think he will. I don't I don't know Sheesh. if by the end of this year it's going to happen, but I just see so much talent with everything that guy does. I like him. Yeah, he's athletically gifted, you know, obviously, but top 10 player, that's that's a big leap, Chris. It will be, but okay. I think I, I think that's what's going to happen with this organization. They've got some guys. There's some lean years, the Tigers, lean years, but I I think they're going to be all right. Um, now we got some news on a couple of young guys in the AL West, and it's not good news. Uh, Josh Young out indefinitely with a fractured wrist, did it on a swing. Bruce Bochy said, yeah, it's going to be a while. We feel terribly for the kid. Um, in the meantime, the A's opened a few eyes before yesterday's game. They sent down Estery Ruiz. Are you more disappointed for Young or confused about Ruiz? Nothing confuses me about what the A's do anymore. Like, I just, I don't, I, it's, I read like kind of what they were saying. Well, we want him to be an everyday player. He does, you know, offensively, he's not there yet. So we want him to go work on it at the minor level. What, for what? Why not work at it at the big league level? You guys are not going to be in contention. That's for teams that are in contention that needs, you know, someone to lead off for them and give them numbers. You guys don't need that whatsoever. This guy is much better served being in the big leagues, learning at the big league level. He can work on whatever he needs to work on 
at the big level because that's the best competition he's going to face. You want to send him down to AAA and do what? What, what, what are you going to do that's different in AAA that you can't do on the Oakland A's at the big league level? I, I am so over what's going on there. It's, it's insane. Um, I, what's the question, dude? I just got... <sighs> uh, so are you, more, are you more disappointed for Young or confused by the decision with Ruiz? I'm more disappointed for for Josh Young. I mean, it sucks. I mean, what do you, what are you going to do? You want to see, you want to be able to be on the field every day. This, and when he is on the field, this guy's an absolute masher. Yeah. Uh, so I'm definitely disappointed, especially when it's stuff that's out of your control. When you get injuries that are out of your control, like you just, you feel for the guy, you know, well, coming aren't off of, out of your control. Huh? Aren't all injuries out of your control for the most part? You can do some stupid things, I think. Well, yes. I mean, yes. You, and on you, the baseball field, you can do some stupid things. You could do what you Bryce Harper did. Punch a wall is you can is, punch a wall. You can flip over a railing that you didn't need to, Bryce Harper. Okay, um, all right. Yeah, like out, outfielders, I think, can injure themselves when they didn't really, they don't really need to. Okay, running fair. into people. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. Um, so I'm more disappointed for for Josh, but I'm also just frustrated with the A's. And I think the David Forrest, the explanation he gave in or he gave was silly to me. Yeah, with Young. I feel terribly for him. Last year, remember, he broke his thumb when Solaire hit a ball off his mid. He still ended up turning a double play on it. But, yeah, I mean, it's just – don't give me the whole, oh, he's fragile sort of thing. These are freakish injuries, and hopefully he gets back in a few months or I, who knows how long it's going to take for him. The Ruiz stuff, there's anger, and then there's social media anger. Let's not paint this for something it isn't, okay? He is not Ricky Henderson, folks. No. You're not you did not send down Ricky Henderson. Does he have things to work on? Yes. Last year he had a 5 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. That's not good enough if you're going to be at the top of a major league lineup, particularly with his speed. And Katze says, "Yes, it's hard to, you know, we need to get him on base in order for him to steal bases." But a few things he is one of the few lightning bolts for the A's franchise right now. He's one of the few guys that the fans out there can cheer for and can change the dynamic of a game. He did it against my Guardians on Sunday this weekend. Um, yes, you are 100% right. He can learn all this up here. And and for Katze to say, well, he can be, he can be in the everyday lineup down there. He can be in the lineup every day here too. Yes. Believe me. I mean, y'all are you should trade Seth Brown at some point this year. If that's what we're doing, I mean, Seth Brown's a good player against right-handed pitching. Fine. Go trade him. Go get something and let Estery Ruiz play. He was part of an enormous trade, three-team trade, that sent Sean Murphy out of town and sent Williams Contreras to Milwaukee. This kid better do something. So let him let him fail up here fine yeah i mean i yeah I, I mean i totally agree chris i just they they keep saying he's part of the future of this franchise then let him be part of the franchise let him be up here like i said like if you're a you know the baltimore orioles and you know you're not getting what you need out of a player and he needs to go work on some things sure i understand that every win matters wins wins don't matter to the ace oh they and don't that's know. crazy that i just said that like it but they don't. I don't know what matters to them organizationally right now. I really don't. And it's sad. And we're not going to beat up on these people. Anymore. And don't take it out on the players. What can they do? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, one quick note before we get out of here. What the hell happened with the White Sox first base coaching situation? Was it? You know what happened. Okay. So he took a Lamar Jackson poop and didn't He was doing, tell a, do he was doing a doo doo. But here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. First of all, it's hilarious because it's the White Sox and they've yeah. been a mess the last couple of years. But like anybody else could have went out there. What were they doing? I don't know. Somebody just grab a helmet and go to first. Like let a player do it. Go a little player do it. Sometimes you, you see that in uh, in high school ball. We're down a couple coaches. You yeah, know. but I think are we in agreement that he was just, just doing a little doo doo? I think so. Or a big doo doo. I don't know. That'd be rough because you're wearing white head to toe. What do you mean? You just you don't you don't wipe? 
Well, you, of course you do. I'm just saying that sometimes if you're in a rush. Oh my gosh. Let's get, I actually have a story. Let's get off of this one. I have a story. What, what do you got? So uh, you always love to talk about my relationship with uh, my QB1, Matthew Stafford. One yeah. night we were out to dinner uh, down in Newport and we see Scott Boris. I might have told this story already before. Uh, and we start talking. He starts talking about Matthew's high school career. So we always like joke about Scotty B and, and all these things. And I always see him at Dodger Stadium. He's always really nice to me. I don't know why he's nice to me. I don't even know why he knows me, but he does. Mm -hmm. So he's there yesterday and uh, we just start talking again. And um, I say, hey, man, we got to get a picture to go. I'm going to send it to Matthew. Look at this selfie we got. Oh, my gosh. Can you guys see it? Well, what you need to do is send that to Jimmy and Jake and say, I want you to meet my new representative for my new contract. I told I sent it to Kyle last night. I said, don't post this, but I wanted to share it with the talking baseball chat. I think it's really funny. Uh, me and Scott, this guy's got less wrinkles than I do. He's looking great. Well, there's easy ways to solve that in the Los Angeles area. He did tell me, Matthew, big arm, fiery competitor, light bat. So I, I love that he said that. That was good for me. That was a good one for me. Hey, thank God he saved something for the rest of us. Oh, hey, Stafford, yeah, no you great everything. <laughs> All right, we're back at it again. Once again, we think on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're probably going to go, if you want to join us for the live portion of the show, which we really appreciate because the numbers have been incredible. Uh, if you want to join us on Wednesday, it'll be at noon Eastern, I believe. Does that sound right, Ploof? Uh, yes. Okay. Great. Yes. You Monday, think? Wednesday, Fridays are typically going to be at noon Eastern. Yeah. Now, some days it'll change a little bit because of schedules. That happens in life. But we'll try to remain as consistent as possible. So for our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and the uber-talented, now Scott Boris's best friend, Trevor Plouffe, I am Chris Rose. We will see you Wednesday here on Baseball Today.